All right, what piece of information can we find first? We have to find angle C. That has, that's the only thing that we can find because here we have a side and the opposite angle, so we can set up our ratio. But the only other known piece that we have is this other side, so we need to find its opposite angle. So my suggestion is use the set up your ratio so your unknown is on the top of the fraction. So the sine of C, that's our unknown, over the side opposite it is equal to, based on the law of sines, the sine of our known angle, 21 degrees, over the side opposite it, 10. So here's our calculation. We can do, uh, now let me, let me take, or show you what happens on your calculator if you tried to do, use the solve key. Did anybody try to use that? And it, it gave you some, at, some symbols and stuff, right? Okay, so if you're going to use the solve key on this, understand that in order to solve for an angle using a trig ratio, you have to use the inverse trig ratio. The calculator doesn't do that for you. Okay, so if you're going to use the solve key, what you would need to do on this is you'd need to let whatever you're solving for be the whole sine of C if you're going to solve it this way. Okay? And so in doing this, you would say x over 15 equals sine of 21 over 10 okay, if you're going to solve it that way. So x divided by 15 equals the sine of 21 over 10, and you're going to solve for x. But what you have to understand, what you're solving for here isn't your answer. It's the sine ratio for the angle you want. So if you hit enter, oops, and let's say we put it in decimal form, what you get is sine c is equal to 0.53755, so on. Okay. Now, if I were to just give you this right here and ask you to find angle c, could you do it? You remember doing that from right before uh, break or from the before the finals. If you're solving for an angle, you take the inverse sine of whatever that ratio or the inverse trig ratio. So here it's sine, inverse sine of that ratio. So here what we would have to do is we take the inverse sine, so green diamond y, of this number. Okay, and Again, I'm going to delete my x equals here. I just want the exact value. And so I get my angle measure to be 32.5 approximately. Okay, now, that's if you're going to use your calculator. What you see here is the calculator really doesn't give you all that much extra from what you would do by hand. So on this particular case, I would just solve it by hand. I, when I say by hand, you're still using your calculator. But what I would do is just get your sine of C alone by multiplying both sides by 15. So if you took this whole equation, uh, the sine of 21 oops, times 15 divided by 10, oops, put it into decimal form, what you're going to see is it's still that same number. And then you can just take the inverse sine of this. So again, green diamond y. I can just use the, the previous answer. And it confirms the 32.5 approximately. Same thing. Um, but your calculators will not do the inverse trig ratios automatically for you in the solve feature. And so once we take this angle, what we can now do is we can add that to 21. And then we can subtract that whole thing from 180. Did everybody see how I did that on my calculator? And so I just added it. Again, when you hit a an math operation key, it just builds from the previous one. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take 180, subtract, and then I'm just going to go highlight that number. The advantage to highlighting it is it pulls the entire number. So see here how it stops displaying digits after the 4? When you enter it, it continues. with It's the exact value as far as it can. And so you're more likely to be accurate on there. And so we get this final angle to be 126.5 approximately. When you write your angles on here, 
I do want you to make one quick check and make sure they add up to 180. And so the ones that you have here, 126.5 plus 32.5 plus 21, do those add up to 180? Yes. If your rounding is off in any way, you need to balance it. I still want things to be consistent. Uh, if you need to go to two, to two decimals, you might have to. Um, again, I'll try to specify what I want it rounded to if you're entering things online. Okay, once we have these angle measures, we can now solve for B. And so the setup for solving B is we take begin with our unknown. So B over the sine of the angle opposite it, sine of 126.5, is equal to, now, which of these pairings is going to be the most accurate, Sam? Good, so the 21 and 10, so 10 over sine of 21. And, and so when you, when you enter this and calculate, um, again, you can use solve feature, you can also just do it by hand. I'm going to go ahead and, and calculate by, or enter it by hand. So I'm going to take 10 divided by sine of 21. And then I'm going to multiply that by, again, if we multiply both sides by the sine of 126.5. Those will cancel. And so when I multiply by the sine of 126.5. I'm not going to approximate here. What I need to do is use my calculator, okay, go up and highlight the exact value, which it shows right on this display. Hit enter. So I pull the exact value in, close it off, and now when I hit enter, I get my answer of 22.4 as my side length B. Hey, don't round off answers until you write them down. So any calculations that you do with your calculator, you have to use exact values. Uh, you only round when you enter your answer. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're not going to put a, you're not going to put an approximation in your calculations. You're always going to use exact values. Okay, now, so this would be one possible triangle. However, this is not the only triangle that has these same three given pieces of information of 21 degrees, a side of 15, and a side of 10. Okay, the reason that that's true is, if you remember when we looked at the sketch pad activity for demonstrating SSA is not a congruence pattern, if we hinged this triangle at point B, it's possible that this side of 10 could have come back this way, correct? There's nothing that said it had to go out that direction. So this darkened triangle also has the same 21 degrees, the same side of 15, and the same length of 10, right? It's possible that's the other possibility. Okay? And so in order to find the other pieces of information, so one possible value for um, B, B could be 22.4 and angle B could be 126.5 and angle C could have been 32.5. So this is one possible case. The other possible case is this darkened triangle. Here we have the C value down here. How might we be able to find what this angle measure is? Any ideas? Easy way to set it up, though, is what kind of a triangle is B, C, and then the new C? This is 10, this is 10, so it's a an isosceles triangle. And what do you know about the base angles of isosceles triangle? So this angle of 32.5, which is what we found on our calculation here, means that this angle is 32.5, which means our new or our second possible C value is going to be what? The supplement, right? That's a linear pair. So if we took 180 and we subtracted this measure, 32.5, but again, remember, you want the exact answer. So we need to go back up, oops, and there it is. Find it in our calculators and pull it down. So 180 minus 32.5 gives us 147.5. Okay. 
So our other possible angle here could have been 147.5. And so how would we find what our new angle B would have been here? We could then, Sam? Well, if, uh, if B3 is the north 3205, then this is top and left B. The uh, announcement is 180 and back down is 136. Okay, let me, can I, you can do it that way. Let me offer a shortcut. I had mentioned the concept of exterior angles of a triangle are always is always a shortcut, but students rarely see it. But this angle right here is an exterior angle of this triangle. So what does that mean that this angle A and B have to add up to? 32.5, right? So we could do a couple things to find this angle. One, we could do, we could find the vertex angle by taking 126.5 minus two 32.5. Uh, or, I'm sorry, 32.5 and 32.5 minus 180. Find what that is, subtract it from 126, and that gives us this angle. But it might be easier to just take uh, this angle right here, subtract 21 from it. So if we take, again, this, uh, this answer, 32.5, and if we subtract the 21 from it, that's going to give us this answer of 11.5 approximately. And we could also use triangle sum. We could say 147.5 plus 21, take that whole thing, subtract from 180. So as you guys see, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can find it. Choose whatever works for you. It's all going to involve typing it in your calculator and calculating. So just do whatever's convenient. Okay, but here's my angle, and I can test this. Let's see, 11.5 plus 147.5 plus 21, does that equal 180? Yeah, so I confirm my angles are correct now. And so my final calculation is I want to find the new value B. So this is the new value B right here. So B is to the sine of the opposite angle, which is now 11.5. And we have the same ratio, 10 over the sine of 21. And so what we can now do is perform this calculation. Okay. And so if we enter it, I can enter it right in this form if I want to. I'm just going to re-enter all these pieces, but we have 10 divided by the sine of 21. All divided, oops, all times the sine of 11.5. But I don't want to use 11.5, I want to use the exact measure, so I need to go back up to where my calculator has displayed the exact value. Enter that, and when I do, I get the answer 5.6 approximately. Okay, and so now when we look at these, we have two possible triangles that exist for which these original two sides and angle could possibly work. 